we're going to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 24. The Bible says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Praise God. And then we read um, Revelation chapter 4, verse 2 to 4. At once I saw, I was caught up in spirit. I saw a throne that was in heaven, and on the throne sat one whose appearance sparkled like jasper and carnelian. Around the throne was a halo as brilliant as an emerald. Surrounding the throne, I saw 24 other thrones on which 24 elders sat, dressed in white garments and with gold crowns on their heads. Praise God. That is John. And then we have uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying, and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook, all the doors flew open, and the chains of all were pulled loose. Praise God. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thanksgiving for this word, thanksgiving for the gift of our lives. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together once again. Open our hearts to comprehend, understand your word, learn something new from your word that is going to help us to be drawn closer to you, to have our hearts, our lives transformed from inside out, to have our mind focused on you and our eyes fixed on you. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So the topic for this meditation is true worship. True worship and those scriptures we have read are going to help us with that, uh, meditating on that word. And uh, the most interesting thing is we have a scenario of a woman broken, wounded, heart shattered, um, you can name it, <laughs> rejected, you know. And this is the woman that Jesus chose to teach what true worship is. <laughs> Very interesting. And he chose in a very unusual moment, a very unusual time and place. But the message that he gives is so, so relevant that um, it also happens that John gets a revelation. Like he's very, I don't know how, you know, okay, we know he's the Holy Spirit, definitely. The Holy Spirit was inspiring all that is written in the Word. And that is why we have one word in Genesis that connects to maybe um, to the prophets and then connects to uh, the New Testament. So we have a word here that is John 4 verse 24 where Jesus is speaking to uh, the Samaritan woman. And he's saying, he's just trying to explain who God is because she didn't know of who the true God is because she was a Gentile. And Jesus is explaining to this woman who the true God is. And when he's talking about it, he just said a few words that God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then uh, years later, I don't know how many years, because you know, John got this revelation um, later on in life after Jesus has gone and they have served and I mean, it was later on when he was old and everything, but now we get a picture of exactly what Jesus had spoken to the Samaritan woman. And then the Lord says that, uh, John says, at once I was caught up in spirit, a throne was there in heaven, and on the throne sat one whose appearance sparkled like Jasper and Canadian. So Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, God is spirit. And then John gets a revelation with the image of who Jesus had spoken about years down the line. We see the divinity of God revealed in this, you know, and how the Holy Spirit works 
to complete the good work that the Lord has begun. Because the Lord began this work, you know, when he spoke to the Samaritan, and now he's completing with this revelation that John is given. And also he goes on to reveal that uh, there is um, surrounding the throne was 24 other elders, other thrones on which 24 elders sat dressed in white garments and with gold crowns on their heads. Now, that is a Revelation 4, verse 2 to 4. Jesus spoke to the Samaritan a woman in John chapter 4, verse 24. I, I don't know how that connection is just beyond even my own imagination. I find it very interesting. And of course now we have um, the image painted for us when Jesus shows up in heaven after the resurrection and that is gonna be in john uh, no revelation chapter 5 that jesus walks to the throne like a lamb that was slain and when he gets to heaven he gets the scroll that is a uh, 5 verse uh, 7 he came and received the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne and when when he took the scroll the four living creatures 24 elders fell down before the lamb each of the elders held a harp and gold bowls filled with incense which are the prayers of the holy ones they sang a new hymn and then it goes on worthy are you to receive the scroll and to break open its seals for you are slain with your blood you purchase for god those from every tribe and tongue and people and nation so the lord is worthy of our worship he is worthy of our worship he comes to heaven and <laughs> the minute he gets to heaven he takes his place and worship is transferred this is what the, the father willed and that is why he willed to glorify him so worship goes to jesus and uh, now the new song that he sang is worthy is the lamb and we see the elders um they have the bowls filled with incense the bible says they are the prayers of the holy ones so it means that with the prayers there has to be worship and the other thing that we are reminded when we read um the book of romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 the bible says that um offer your bodies as a living sacrifice a living sacrifice because it's all about worship i don't know if we can really live our lives to the full without worshiping god i don't think so there will always be issues and problems and all that because we are created to worship to know him when we know him definitely even the process of seeking to know him uh, causes his love to flow to us and then when we love him we cannot help worshiping worship is about our self giving to the lord so uh, romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 the bible says i urge you therefore brothers by the mercies of god to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god as your spiritual worship as your spiritual worship do not conform yourself to this age but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of god what is good and pleasing and perfect so it is not um it is not just an occasion you know like a place we have to go and do these things of course there's there's a church but there is also the bible is guiding us to true worship what jesus was teaching the samaritan woman it has to do with us offering our body, us offering our mind. And it is all about submitting to God, submitting and offering ourselves to God. And to know why are we here. <laughs> and we see we have um, a very other interesting story here of uh, two people who apparently were imprisoned. They were imprisoned for doing what was right, you know. Uh, Paul and Silas and um, when they got imprisoned they decided because they already knew the God 
they were serving. They had a relationship, they had experienced him, and they could not hold themselves back. So they were talking about him and proclaiming the good news. And so the place that they found themselves did not really matter. In a way, it did not interfere or affect their worship to God. They had already offered their bodies, their mind, their soul, their lives to Jesus. So even if the circumstances were really difficult and complicated, you know, as we, if we read that story, we are going to find out that uh, they were not meant to be arrested. And that is why they refused to go and they, they called. They said, do they know that it wasn't right for them to be arrested? So it was like kind of injustice. But instead of complaining or worrying or getting stressed up or even uh, like they had a right not to be in prison. Um, but instead of all that, they chose that moment uh, as a moment to do what they loved doing. They decided to worship God. And we see what happens. You know, this is a story, we even have all these songs that we sing about Paul and Silas singing in prison. But if we really think about this situation, and then we, we come back to our lives, and we imagine it is not necessarily about a physical prison. You know, it might not happen to us, you and I today, that we'll be, uh, you know, maybe walking on the road preaching and we get arrested and put in prison. It might not be a physical one, but there are situations that come in our lives, there are moments that come in our lives that seem or happen to make us experience this kind of imprisonment where we become, oh, yesterday we were talking about victims of circumstance, where, you know, the circumstances are just too difficult even to comprehend. And even these things, when they happen in our lives, we know that they shouldn't happen. But we cannot understand why are they happening. And the other aspect is, the Bible records that Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were praying and singing hymns to God. We found out that when Jesus sat on the throne, the elders were worshipping and offering the prayers of the holy ones. Well, we know um, many times the Lord has said, call unto me and I will answer you. Uh, Jeremiah uh, 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer you. However, I think it is important for us to know and to have this engraved in our hearts that uh, I believe also is one of the reasons why we have the book of Psalms. <laughs> like It has taken all these pages in our Bible. And Jesus chose to come through the language of Judah because there's something about worship. There's something about worship. So even though we have prayers, we have to worship. It is not, um, even though it does not really, it's not like he's sitting there waiting for our worship. No, it is something that I think God has provided us with to help us to grow in the knowledge of him, to grow closer to him, to experience these living waters. Because uh, the book of Revelation, the Isabasta, says that the Lamb of God sits on the throne. Under the throne, there is a stream of life-giving water flowing, flowing. That water is not just that. It is flowing. That means it is fresh. So if the Lamb of God is sitting on the throne and we are on our knees worshipping, because we can't worship God standing, you know, like, um, okay, we can, but I just mean spiritually. Uh, when we think about worship, we think about also of posture. We think of prostrating. We think of um, like uh, kneeling. So when we get into this posture of worship, then definitely we experience what this life-giving waters is meant to do in our lives, to lift all our burdens. We get renewed, we get a new grace, we get a new life, we get restored, we get revived. So the prayers that we offer 
You don't just offer them prayers alone, but we offer with worship. And when we worship, because David said that when we worship, um, in the praises of us, of, in our midst, when we, we pray, we worship, then God comes to dwell in our praises. It, in my mind, I think of it like a throne. So the worship we are giving, it's like he builds a throne, then he sits there. There is nothing that he cannot receive at that moment. There is nothing that he, because he's already in our situation. Worship to God draws his heart to us. Like he comes closer to us or he draws us closer to him. When we seek to draw, we seek to, to go to him, he comes to us. He comes to our situation. He comes and intervenes in that. We don't even need to say that prayer. We just need to hold it in our heart. You know, he can read those prayers in our heart and just worship. You know? And this is why when we see Paul and Silas in prison, they're in a very difficult situation. They could have actually complained to God and said, why are we here? You know, how did you not protect us? They could have just done anything. But they had no time to complain. They knew exactly what to do. They prayed and they were singing. And they were beaten up. They were in pain and all that. And you see what happens when we praise God. This is a, a, it's called a sacrifice of worship. Thanksgiving as a sacrifice because already the situation and the circumstances that are in their, in where they are, are speaking otherwise. But they choose because they have a relationship with Jesus. They choose to worship. When we choose to worship God, irrespective of the circumstances that are in our life, irrespective of how we feel irrespective of what we see or don't see, irrespective of what we are going through, whether we are hurting. Imagine Jesus taught a Samaritan woman, a wounded, broken, rejected woman, what true worship is. And she learned a great deal. And we know she learned because she left her water jar and she went back to proclaim the good news. Now, it means that even though we know that true worship can only come from a broken heart, there is something else that we have to learn here. That if we choose to worship God, irrespective of our circumstance, irrespective of our situation, it becomes a sacrifice. Whenever, whenever this sacrifice goes to God, because heaven understands the language of sacrifice because of what Jesus did, then you can be assured that the whole heaven will go into a standstill and your prayer will be answered. And I have experienced mighty, mighty breakthroughs in my life when I have turned to God, not to, to petition, but to worship through my pain, through my struggle, through my suffering. And it is interesting. We cannot truly really understand how this thing works, but we know that it is true. So when I see uh, what is happening when Paul and Silas are praising God, that there was suddenly a severe earthquake, that the foundations of the jail shook. This is the jail that they had been kept captive. It shook because they were worshipping and praising God. And then the Bible says the doors flew open. So they didn't, you know, it's just unusual. Think of the prisons we know today. The, these prisons of their time were even worse. And the chains of all, not just them, the chains of all those who are present pulled loose. So when we praise God, when we worship God, even those who are bound in our families, those who we hold here in our hearts, they will be set free, you know? Sometimes it just takes that step of faith, you know? And sometimes when we choose to worship God, than all these other circumstances surrounding us, you know, like what Father Joseph says, then Jesus goes to work. And then we wait, we be still. This verse that says, be still and know that I am God. Then we choose to worship him. It means we have decided to focus on him because there is no way we can worship God if the full focus is not on him. If we are focusing on the other things that are surrounding us, it is very difficult to praise God. And that is why we have to pray and really try to have a mind focused on Jesus. 
focused on Jesus, our eyes to be fixed on him. Because I find that every time, every time that I've been distracted and my mind goes to whatever this situation, you know, especially this situation that is not working out and we are trying to think of a solution over and over again or maybe something happens and now we get burdened by this situation. Whenever the mind is focused on that thing, it is so difficult to praise God. But when these things are happening around us and we choose to focus on Jesus, even through these circumstances, when we realize what is, because you can tell when the mind is, you know, like loitering around, you know, when we come back and focus on him, then it will be so easy for us to be able to worship him, irrespective of what. And then the benefits we are going to enjoy, we are going to celebrate. Because, um... I mean, this is what happens. And we know from the story of Paul and Silas what happened. Definitely everything, like all the doors were open. They did not even run. They decided we are not running. So the head jailer ended up giving their lives to God and his family. You know, it is good to um, let God be God and thank him that you are human. There was a moment I had to really thank God. I said, Lord, I thank you that I'm human. I know the human me, and then you are God. Because if we were to take his place, we wouldn't know what to do. And if he was to take our place, oh, it would be chaos, you know. But it's good to remain in our place and allow God to be God. We do what we can do, and then we let God do what we cannot do. And he has his own way of doing this thing. And his way is the best because nobody else had managed to corner this Samaritan woman. Nobody else had managed. In fact, she was just abandoned. But she was still God's creation. You know, it doesn't matter what she had done. I mean, if this is Jesus, Jesus came for this thing. So he knew exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Even the disciples did not question so when we look at these stories and we see what is happening, I, I, I feel so encouraged because I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what comes our way or what we go through or what situations come our way. But we know that the Lord will always find a way to intervene. So we just keep worshiping and trusting him through everything. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, with thanksgiving, Lord, we offer our hearts to you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us something new. Thank you for reminding us what to worship entails. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes on you, to focus our mind to you. Help us not to be distracted by the circumstances and situations that come our way, by the struggles of this life, by the challenges that come our way. But Lord, we may always remain focused on you, to always remember that you have the final say, and you are the final word. And everything you do, you have it pre-planned, because you are the eternal God. We honor you, we praise you, and we worship you. We are coming into our hearts, Lord, that your word may transform us from inside out, that you may live each day offering our hearts, our lives to you, offering our mind to you and to live in accordance with your purpose and to live to worship you, to live to enthrone you, to live to glorify you. It is in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.